all Christian marriage problems are the man's fault. This is going to be sort of a uh, punch in the face out there to all the brothers in Christ that are married. I'm going to give you this as instruction in righteousness, some reproof, correction, um, not necessarily a doctrinal study, but I want you to think about some things. I want to challenge you today. All right. Um, obviously, the Bible does not teach that all marriage problems are the man's fault, but what I want you to do is I want you to consider this line of thinking as a way to judge yourself. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, the Bible says. So I want you to blame yourself for any faults in the marriage. It's a challenge, okay? I'm going to go through the scriptures. I'm going to give you some interesting things to think about. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Turn first there in your King James Bible. If a sermon doesn't convict you of sin and doesn't make you think, then it's not really much of a sermon. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. That's my desire for you as a man of God. I want you to be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. That's why I'm going to be reproving you today. I'm going to be correcting you as I've had to do to myself. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Go next to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. Remember that. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for her, a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the, wo ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Okay? Spiritual headship is what's going on there. I have a whole study on this about the thing, should a woman wear a head covering? You can watch that, I'm not getting into it in this study. But the whole thing is there is a spiritual headship that happens there between a man and God and a woman. The woman is a weaker vessel. She is not the head of the marriage. You don't, well, you have to have equal rights. Well, then you don't have a biblical marriage. Okay, um, It's not putting the women down. It's just simply saying some bad guy comes into the house. I'm the one that has to fight the guy, not my wife. Okay, um, There are certain duties and things and certain things that God expects differently between a husband and a wife. Spiritual headship is there for a man. Okay, very important to get that. Ephesians chapter 5. This passage here, Ephesians 5 verse 22, we actually read this as our quote-unquote marriage vows at our wedding ceremony. My wife and I had a brother conducting the, the wedding and um, we went through this. Ephesians 5 verse 22 down through verse 33. We'll read these verses quickly. The Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Okay, I did a study many years ago 
it might be online. It's an old audio sermon, and it was the Proverbs 31 man. I don't know how many times I've heard Baptists preach about the Proverbs 31 woman, and they extol this, the ultimate woman for Christian ladies to look up to. The Proverbs 31 woman. Oh, the Proverbs 31 woman. The Proverbs 31 woman is not possible without a Proverbs 31 man. Okay? She has to have her husband that's known in the gates. She has to have a husband that provides for her. That she can reverence. Does your wife look up to you as she would to Jesus Christ? Do you have similar qualities to Jesus Christ? Husband? Hmm. We'll get into some more of that. I'm going to take your hide off in this study. Why? Because I've had to take my own off. I've had to put my flesh down. You understand what I'm saying? And you men out there, if you're a pansy, shut it off right now. You want to be a little sissy? Shut it off and go play video games. You want to be a real man? I'm going to tell you how to do it. You say, have you arrived, Brian? No, I haven't. But I know the direction that I need to go. And I've already been reading it to you. I'm supposed to compare myself to Jesus Christ and say, hey, how are you doing? Look in the mirror. Can my wife really reverence me as she would to Christ? Am I worth it? Hmm. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. Let's read that. First Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house. Well, there can be female pastors too. What do you, how do you do this? You believe in the female pastor thing. It doesn't work. Um, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them with that which are without. He's known in the gates like the Proverbs 31 man. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. You say, well, brother, that's just a, that's just a standard for preachers out there. A bishop, you know. Man desire the office of a bishop, then he has to do those things. But uh, I'm not really feeling like I'm a bishop, so I don't have to do that. I don't have to worry about that. Um, uh, well, I think it's a good standard for all men. I believe in the priesthood of the believer. I don't believe you can just skirt that and say, well, you know, not really for me. I have a different standard as a Christian man. Uh, why aren't you aiming for the very best? Why aren't you trying to do your best? Hmm. Well, my preacher does that stuff for me. I pay his salary, and so I expect him to do all that stuff. What's wrong with you, slug? First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Are you providing for your own? I hope so. Because if you don't, you've denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel. You say, how does me not working hard enough, how am I denying the faith? Because look at what Jesus Christ did for you. Look at how he sacrificed for you. It's rough, isn't it? All right. I've given you some scriptures there to think about. We'll be going to one other place, but I'm going to give you a couple little things here I've written out. Some good attacks. Um, marriage problems. Where do marriage problems come from? Well, number one, I have spiritual attacks. What are you watching and listening to? All right. Slap, slap. Here we go. Time to start attacking myself. And I'm going to attack you as well. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten into an, into an argument with my wife. And it's a bad argument and things are bad and whatever else. And 
and uh, things are said that shouldn't be said and whatever, not profanity, but I'm saying hurtful things, mean things, and I get to praying about it later, and I think, you know, why did that happen? I don't understand why this, this issue was brought up and whatever else. I mean, she's just no good. She's she, this and she's that. And the Lord says, uh, she wasn't the one that was watching that stupid junk on YouTube. What are you wasting your time for, Denlinger? You think Jesus Christ would be here on earth and he'd be watching murder cross videos or old movie clips or things or whatever like that? Oh, um, well, I don't know. I, yeah, I do know. There's times I waste my time. Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus was very busy when he was here on the earth. He was a man on a mission. Shouldn't I be? Shouldn't you be? Are you allowing spiritual attacks into your home? There, man. I have. Is it my wife's fault? Or is it my fault? My fault. Number two, how about financial problems? Well, brother, we're barely able to make ends meet. I don't know what to do. And my wife has to work and, and other things like that. Um, are you working hard enough? Could you be doing something else? Are you praying about it? Could you cut out certain things? Could you live a little bit less worldly? You know, when I was growing up, we had one car. And it was a thing where you know, when my father was at work, my mother didn't go shopping. You know why? Because she couldn't. My father had the car. Oh, wow. We have to have two cars now. Why? Well, we can barely afford to pay our bills and think, okay, then maybe you ought to cut out some of those bills. There's ways to do it. Oh, but brother, you don't understand. We, we just can't live on one income anymore. We do. I live in a... a box over there, a trailer. No running water. No electricity. We sacrifice. Oh, you don't understand. Oh, I understand. I understand. And you know, there's plenty of times when I'm not feeling very good and whatever else, and I want, I, I get little, like a little baby boy, like a lot of you out there, and I start to get a little sissy, and I get, Oh, why can't somebody help me? I don't know. And, and the Lord just goes, get up off of there. Get me out there and get, get some stuff done. Be a man. And over the years, oh, you know, my wife, if she was better, she'd do this. Shut up. Bam. The Lord slaps me around a little bit. Spiritually speaking. I mean, if he'd hit me, I'd be just disintegrated. But you understand what I'm saying here. Smack me around a little bit. I enjoy that. Why? Because that's what it takes to become a man. I mean, imagine the military go through there and the drill instructors said, could you please come over here? I have some you know, instructions for you. They're yelling at you. They're screaming at you. Why? To get you ready for combat. The Lord chastens every son whom he receives. The Bible talks about in the book of Hebrews. For what son is he that he, that he chasteneth not? The, you're no son to God if he doesn't chasten you, if he doesn't slap you around a little bit. And you know something? Marriage is the best thing that ever happened to me. Whoso findeth a, a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. You know something? It took marriage to make me into a man. Video game playing little boy living at home with his parents. That's what I was before I got married. All my siblings are going out getting dating and things and marriage and having children and whatever. And I'm living with my parents and things like a lot of you are doing. And you know, I had to take responsibility and become a man and say, you know what? I'm going to get married. And boy, the responsibilities that came on me. They were good for me. Very good for me. It isn't all just about, you know, hey, get a free sex toy or something, whatever. I'm going to be real blunt in this study, so just deal with it. Um, you just anytime you want it. You know, oh, there's a lot more to marriage, honey. <laughs> a whole lot more to marriage. There's the feelings. There's the emotions. There's a lot of other things. You got to provide for that woman. And a big part of it is you better get off your butt and be a man. Don't be such a sissy. Number three, uh, marriage problems. No intimacy. Okay. Oh man, I don't remember last time my wife and I were together. You know, there's just we're just completely just dead in the water. There's just cold relationship and whatever. Okay. Um, are you staying in good shape? 
Are you staying attractive to her? I have to ask myself that question. Am I in good shape? Am I staying attractive to my wife? You know, a big reason I have a, a long beard is because my wife likes the long beard. A lot of people, brother, when are you going to shave your beard? It looks really unkempt and whatever. She likes it that way. So, sorry, she wins, you lose. Um, how about a porn? Are you a porn viewer? Those struggles with porn and whatever else. How do you think that makes your wife feel? Sissy. You little pervert. I speak from experience. Um, thankfully, I'd gotten victory over pornography, my uh, extreme addiction to it, before I ever met my wife. So I had victory over that sin, praise the Lord. But uh, there's a lot of men that they just keep it right on into the marriage. You know, and they're looking at airbrushed, you know, whores and things that, you know, they, they take away any kind of whatever, uh, blemishes on the woman's skin or whatever else. Now you have artificial intelligence porn, so, you know, you're really an idiot if you're falling for that. They don't even exist. But you're going to have a good relationship with your wife while looking at porn. Get it straightened out. You better. Marriage problem number four, no respect. Um, my wife just doesn't respect me. Well, why is the reason for that? You see, you blame yourself. This isn't about self-pity. This isn't about, oh, I guess I'm just no good. I guess she's just, you know, she deserves something better than me. I guess we should just get to it. No, don't pity yourself. Better yourself. All right? You come out here. Uh, when I used to learn how to log and things, you just seen some of my first trees. The, the face cut and the, and the back cut, you know, coming in and it'd be way off, crooked, going this way. And, you know, the tree's going completely wrong and falling over and smashing another tree and things. It took a while, a lot of pain, a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, until I learned to actually fell trees correctly. Trial and error, you see? And you know something? Your marriage will be the same way. Trial and error. You're going to have some mistakes. You're going to make some errors. You have to get through that. Have you earned her respect? Are you a man? Does she view you as a man? Or do you still act like a little boy? Number five, are you imparting wisdom to her? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I think verse 34 around there, that the women are supposed to be silent in the churches. Verse 35 goes on to say, if she will learn anything, let her ask her husband at home. Not call your pastor and ask his opinion on certain things. You're supposed to be a man of God that understands the scriptures. And if she has a question for you and you can't answer it, you better find the answer. Be a spiritual head. Remember, she's supposed to reverence you as unto Christ. If you want respect from her, then you better earn it. Don't worry about her problems, brother. You take care of your own. Number six, are you protecting her? Abraham's failure, I believe, led to Sarah's sin. Back in the Old Testament. Here comes Pharaoh and his armies. And uh, they come over and they see Sarah and she's a beautiful woman. And they say, you know, who's this? Oh, her? Um, she's, she's my sister. Don't touch me. Don't hurt me. Ugh. All have sinned. All come short of the glory of God. I have my issues and whatever. Abraham was better than me and other issues. But... I would never do that. I don't care how bad things get. Send some huge army of Islamic terrorists or something like that. I'm going to fight, you know, and defend my wife to the death. They're not going to take my wife. No, no, sir. <laughs> I don't care how bad it gets. I've already defended my wife on different occasions. Um, you know, any man, I go out in public, I see any man looking at my wife, Googling her, I like to say, you know, doing the looking up and down at her. And I will just stop what I'm doing and I will just go. And it's always been enough. I'm a big guy. But, you know, I just stare at them. And they're always looking at her and they look over at me and they go like that and they look down. Go ahead and say something. It's my wife. Stop looking at her. I'm a wild man when it comes to that, brother. I'll tell you right now. There are some things I need help with. There's other things that I'm 
the Lord's given me a, a you know abilities in don't mess with my wife that goes very bad for you okay um, I will protect her again telling the story if you haven't heard it right over there four o'clock in the morning the one time and they're laying in bed and I get I, I hear something I look out the window at toward my feet and I see headlights coming back couldn't they weren't coming behind me because we don't have a window back that way to the north in our bedroom but I saw the headlights I was in my underwear okay I sleep I get I have to be cool when I'm sleeping or else I don't sleep I jumped up underwear no shoes no socks pants shirt anything ran grabbed a 762 by 51 battle rifle and uh chambered around and ran out onto the porch zero degrees in the dead of winter and fired three rounds into the air and, and yelled get off my property they started driving back and i went whoop, and leveled the rifle and it was like this and i would have filled them full of lead if they would have been shooting at me oh we got the wrong lane and whatever else and i said get off of my land right now he said wow you sure are courageous no i love my wife you see i'm going to protect her and I find it detestable to think of anybody messing with my wife. And I just kind of, oh, please, no. Oh, please. Jesus wouldn't do that for his bride. I'm supposed to be like him. Number seven, God can use her to show you where you must improve. <laughs> I have seen that so many times. Oh, man. There have been times I have been ready to just to my wife just oh she irritates me so bad sometimes and you know i get so mad at it. i just lord why is she you know saying these things it's just oh it's irritating and the lord says is she right it doesn't matter if she's right or not she's irritating me <laughs> and the lord says is she right yeah she's right then change boy get it fixed up you see, if you really believe in the biblical marriage, then it's you first, man. It's you first, husband. Don't you blame her for anything. You get it sorted out between you and God first. Go look in the mirror. God, if I'm wrong in this, if she's right, then you show it to me. Hey, you know what? She really disrespected me that time. But God, you know what? The reason she did that is because I was in the wrong. You go to her and you say, hey, I need to talk to you. What? What is it? I just want to say something. You were right. I've had to go to my wife a number of times just say, could you pray for me? I'm struggling with this. I know you're right. She says to me, where in the Bible does it say, uh, gonna? I would like you to be a great preacher. I want you to do your very best, Brian. I want you to say, going to. It doesn't matter, whatever. She wants the best for me. She wants to reverence me. She wants to make me better. Please pray for me. I need help. See, I'll tell you a little secret here. Uh, we've had some real bad times in our marriage. Do you know that? You want to know why? Because I wasn't much of a husband. Because I was a sissy little boy. And God used that woman to correct me. And I had to examine myself and say, you know something? She's right. I better change. Praise the Lord. Number eight, humble yourself and ask her to pray for you. Got ahead of myself there. Number nine, show interest in her. You want to be a tough guy, do you? Okay. Deliver your own child. I did. Well, there are some women, you know, and they, they start to have complications. Okay, you know, go to a midwife. You know, you want to go to the hospital thing, whatever. Okay, fine, whatever. I understand. I'm not trying to put anybody down that went through that whole thing. Whatever. But what I'm saying is, um, I delivered my own son. Boy, that opens your eyes up to a new world. 
uh, your little uh, pretty wife there and everything else. And how about it when uh, there's a baby coming out down there and there's all the birthing fluids and all the blood and everything else and you get your hands all through that and everything. Gives you a different perspective. You know, I realized something. I realized how tough my wife was when she went through that. I was tired, <laughs> but I wasn't feeling that kind of pain. Trying to encourage her. That was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. It's a wonderful experience. Lord decided that one was enough for us. And uh, that's the way it is. We've never used any kind of birth control or anything else, just to be very blunt about it. Um, for whatever reason, God just said, okay, one's all you get. I don't know why or whatever else, but that's it. Okay, then I'll be thankful for what I have. Thankful for, for what he did for me and that bonding experience. And my wife, she said she dreamed. She always thought, I want to have a child someday, and I want to have my child at home. Her father was actually born at home. And she said, that's my dream. I want to be able to marry a man that's strong enough and has enough character that he'll deliver the baby. Joseph did it with Mary. God manifests in the flesh and he's, oh, I'll take care of it. I don't need a midwife. I'll take care of it. Makes you a man. Real quick. <laughs> Study natural free birthing. We have a video on it. Okay. And there's a lot of other videos out there. And, uh, oh, it's her uh, time of the month or whatever else. Okay, get involved. Honey, what can I get you? Ew, yuck. Ew, there's blood there. Ew. Uh. Sissy. I don't, I remember some idiot the one time wrote a comment and he said, he said about, uh, I was ripping on the thing of women wearing makeup and things. Makeup's toxic. It's poisonous. Okay. <laughs> Uh, classically speaking and in the scriptures, women that wore makeup were prostitutes. Okay. You shouldn't need to see your wife in makeup. Okay. You're not always going to be able to see her in makeup. And this guy said about, I remember some idiot in the comments and he wrote and he said, I'm glad that my wife wears makeup because I saw her once without it. And it was, she was really, you know, not very attractive or something. <laughs> Poor thing, you. If you can't, if you can look at your wife without makeup on and, and, you know, not see her beauty, well, that's a problem. Um, and finally, number 10, uh, Jesus Christ is with us forever. Marriage is the same. Well, you don't understand, brother. My wife left me. Why did she leave you? Some of these great preachers out there, you know, I've been through multiple marriages because my wife didn't quit the, or I didn't quit the ministry, my wife did. Uh, why did she quit the ministry? It's because you weren't a good husband. Don't even talk to me about it. I know the stories, I know the different guys out there, great preachers and whatever else. Oh, my wife left me, she got involved in feminism, what, what did you do to stop it? Well, you don't understand, Brian. She was rotten from the very beginning. Then why did you marry her? Huh? Duh. <laughs> I'm going to be nice to you. I'm not going to be nice to you. We've gotten away from the thing of uh, scriptural marriage and teaching on the thing of you get married, you get married once. Yeah, there's scriptural grounds for divorce and all that other stuff, but you know what? It's because of the hardness of your heart that the Lord had to put that in there. Not because it's a good thing. Hebrews chapter 13. We'll go there. Finish up there. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You know, Jesus is saying that to us, but you know what? A man should be able to say that to his wife. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know what you're doing when you waste your time with a bunch of stupid things, stupid pursuits and whatever, and hanging out with friends and go play video games while your wife is at home? You know what you're doing? 
you're leaving her and you're forsaking her. Well, she wants her time and I need my time and whatever else. Uh, why don't you spend your time serving the Lord as a Christian couple? You know, I saw it growing up. Uh, my father, he liked to play softball. Softball Hall of Fame in Lancaster County. He was a great ball player. He could fast pitch softball. He could flow it in there and he could throw almost a 100 mile an hour, you know, fastball. Really fast in the high 90 mile an hour speed range. And I'm not joking. That's what he did. And there were a lot of times that they had arguments because my father had to get to the game. It's a tournament. He's going to be uh, playing this game and whatever. And he's being paid by the bank that sponsors him. And he's being paid by actually the uh, Elks Lodge, I think, the one time, whatever. My father wasn't a Freemason, but he was paid by them the one time to play softball, fast pitch softball, um, you know, on a local level and things. And there were a lot of times he was off playing some game somewhere and my mom was at home trying to put all of us children to bed. Five children. Where's my father at? Uh, heard the stories of uh, <clears throat> Peter Ruckman, marriages that he went through. Oh, well, you know, early on there, you know, we were living in a trailer, plywood trailer, and, you know, the wife is there taking care of the five children, and I'm off, you know, preaching and traveling and whatever. Don't put that kind of uh, burden on your wife. You know, and I have to constantly think about it. Right now, my wife and my son are here. They're on the property doing some fun things. And there's times I really want to get more videos done and I want to contact people and write and, and whatever. And you know something? My wife needs me. And I'm going to be doing more of that in the future. Taking some time off. I'm going to be taking some time off here coming up in, you know, within the next few days doing things. But uh, I want you to kind of change your way of thinking all of my Christian brothers out there. And instead of blaming your wife for things that obviously look like it was her fault, trying to get the sermon done before the battery died. I could see it was starting to blink. Went dead on me. But just to finish up here, what I was saying, <clears throat> there will be times when you will see your wife and she'll do some real big mistake and she'll, she'll admit to it and whatever else. And you know what? Be man enough to consider that maybe it was your fault. And again, like I said earlier, it's not about self-pity. Oh, I'm just no good. I can't do anything good. That's not it. But just think to yourself, did I leave a spiritual door open when I watched that horrible thing? Did I, did I have the wrong kind of music playing? Am I thinking the wrong kind of thoughts? Did I let my guard down? What's my part in this thing that went wrong? Consider it. Okay? It'll make you a better man. Um... Every expert I've ever learned from, be they wood turner, logger, uh, dirt bike, motocross type of guy or whatever else in terms of riding skills because I've, you know, was a motorcycle mechanic, trained to be a motorcycle mechanic and I was raised, you know, riding dirt bikes and things. And uh, every guy I ever learned from, they were very self-critical, extremely self-critical. And they would look and say, okay, I didn't do that right and whatever. And they would, they would refine their techniques wood turner and he'd be turning and he'd turn the gouge a certain way and I'd call it and oh man ripped a big chunk out of the wood okay don't go too far over this way but if there's a good spot you turn and you're turning the wood and you're turning in there like this and you, you come in this way and you're turning this way you're refining continually logger you're out here you're felling a tree you say okay now this tree i've had i've felled probably a hundred of these trees like this one here that one's a leaner right there. Well, it's small enough. I shouldn't have a problem. But if I have to try to get it to fell over that way, there's ways I can do it. But there's not enough tree there for to put wedges in to make it to swing it. I'd have to rig it up high and try to pull it that way. You learn things. You refine. See? And that's what a marriage should be. A marriage should improve over time and get better over time and not get worse. And if it's getting worse, it's your fault husband, every single time. You could have done something differently. Oh, but Brother Brian, like, like I said again earlier, oh, but Brother Brian, you don't understand this woman. She's just terrible. You married her. <laughs> you better think about that. Okay? You young single guys out there, um, I think it's a great thing to get married. You can be an Apostle Paul or whatever else, but you know what? If you're messing around with lust and looking at pornography and, and things... I mean, if you have some kind of ministry that you're just completely sold out and doing the ministry, go for it. 
Um, but if you have any kind of a problem with discipline and whatever else, it's not just about the thing of if you're, mar if you're burning, you should marry. Um, with lust, in other words. There's also the thing of you need to grow up. You need to have some real responsibilities. And uh, marriage will help you with that. Okay? I was a single guy for 36 years. I understand. Believe me. So that is going to be it for this study. I do hope it's been a challenge to you, to all the married brethren out there, and to the single guys that are thinking about marriage. Um, make sure you get the right one. Okay? She doesn't have to be perfect. That's your job. Your job is to make her better. Think about that one. I mean, try to get somebody who's saved. You know, she might be completely lost. My wife was completely lost when I first met her. Witness to her. Led her to the Lord. Got her straightened out doctrinally and things. And I watched. How's she doing? She's doing very well. Okay, it took. Real conversion. All right. Would she make the right kind of wife? Looked at all the different things and qualifications and whatever else. I think we'll get along just fine. Hey, good. Then we had a great marriage. No. You say, do you have a good marriage now? Well, better, but it's still not where it needs to be. And I still have work to do on myself. There's still times that I do completely stupid things and I think, let my guard down again, didn't I, Lord? And the Lord says, yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better. Yeah, try, boy. <laughs> That's the kind of relationship that you should have with the Lord. A father chastening his son. Get out here in the woods sometimes. The Lord says, let me just get a switch. You know, just get a, just get a stick here like this. Come here, boy. Come here. <clears throat> What do you think? What do you think the Lord scourging a son means? You think it's hugs and kisses? You're oh 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 oh! Stop watching that stuff on YouTube. Stop listening to that music. Work harder. Teach her how to make sacrifices. Study the scriptures more. Provide for her. Be concerned about her feelings. Let her talk about these things. Stop playing video games. Oh, 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 oh. If you're his, he'll scourge you. He'll give you a good beating. You say, well, I don't feel that way about God. My God loves me and whatever else. Well, you're lost. You're lost. I can tell you that because you're contradicting the scriptures. If you're genuinely born again, he'll scourge you. Okay, that is going to be it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Unless you're a sissy, then you won't be back. So goodbye. Unsubscribe, please.